Room service I've ever had. What? What? <gasps> yes. This is like the best room service I've ever had. Oh my god. This is amazing. You were eating my ice cream. <gasps> I mean, to be fair, they're your ice creams, but I just, I've got no one out of the freezer for me. The ice cream itself is sugar free which is really exciting. The biscuit's sugar-free, but it's not gluten-free. It's from Macadonna, <laughs> the best supermarket in Spain. <laughs> this video is not sponsored by Macadonna. It is sponsored, though, by GN Hearing. That was a smooth segue. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Who make fantastic hearing aids that you will be finding out about throughout this video. Let's be honest, they've revolutionized my life. Even I can wear them. That's really bad, isn't it? I don't know that that's a selling point. No, but I mean, I've Claudia tried, can wear them. I've tried them on, and they're like really, really easy to function. If that they're Claudia-proof. Even <gasps> Claudia can make them work. Yeah. And people don't know, I'm not very tech savvy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can use an app with them, and um, even Claudia can make it work. So. I mean, I think you were actually using the app. I was just wearing the hearing aids. <laughs> <laughs> also, something that I noticed on the plane on the way over is the Bluetooth in these hearing aids works on the plane. Oh, what, does some um, Bluetooth not work on plane? Yeah, so other hearing aids I've had in the past have had Bluetooth enabled, supposedly. Mm. However, hasn't worked on planes. Oh. Yeah, for these, it actually works. Mm. And whilst wearing them on the plane, I've not got a horrendous headache because they've been able to cut out that awful I definitely... background hum. I definitely noticed you wearing the um, hair aids on the plane when normally you take them off. Flight itself was actually pretty good. Rupert enjoyed his first flight. Yeah. We had some very cute moments of him looking out the window like. I don't what? know if he was like aware <laughs> that what was going on exactly. <laughs> we were up in the air. He was quite. He was very good. Like he was not. He didn't complain about the fact we were like stuck in this quite small space. He was just like okay. And he'd like. Luckily, we had to have a spare seat though between Such us. Such a chill kid. <laughs> he had his. Whole, he had his own whole seat. I really hope we have the same on the way back because to be honest, I was getting a bit paranoid about him sleeping on my lap because he never does that. Should we wait for that? Yeah. All right. The helicopter's gone. That's the first time I think I've seen or heard a helicopter fly past, actually. We do get a lot of paragliders, though. Yeah, just because it's very intrusive. I was like, we bought the drone and I was like, oh, we can get some drone shots. And I realised other people in the villas around us might not appreciate that. For the same reason you don't want people paragliding over you. <laughs> can you, like, need. see anything? I feel like I need to wear my glasses. Very small eyes. You have small eyes and longer eyelashes. So you've like, got, like, natural shades. <laughs> So it was a four hour flight and he slept for a good 40 minutes of it. I know, I was hoping he was going to sleep longer. I really thought he would sleep for like two hours or something because people were like, yeah, like the white noise of the, machi of the, of the machine, the, the engine like makes them just like sleep, but it didn't. He doesn't sleep with the white noise machine then. <laughs> no, he doesn't. I feel like anyway, we shot ourselves in the foot here. What we did, well, not really. I think I'd rather like go with him being able to self-soothe and lying not on my lap. <laughs> the majority of the time than the one time we get a flight in the whole seven months of his life. We actually entertained him with food. We've made he sure a lot. to take a lot of snacks on the way back as well. Because literally he can be like, uh -huh, and I'm like, snack, and he's like, oh yeah. Not that he cries like that. Our child has decided no, he, he doesn't shouts. cry. No, he just goes, more, more. No, he doesn't. He's more. Just, that, that's very generous. He's it's much louder than that. <laughs> Oh, I don't think I hear that note. It's like awful. You know when you have a migraine and you're like, Rupert, I have a migraine, you're making it worse. Well, that's how it sounds all the time. Oh. Yeah. I guess your hearing aid, I guess your hearing aids like cancel out <laughs> My hearing aids like, noises. you don't need this, Jessica. Yeah. It does that too. It's quite a good mm. hearing aid. It's like, is this an important noise? No. no. Anyway, our villa has got um, like two bedrooms. It's very, really nice. It's got a pool. Yeah. It's very small. But uh, for Rupert, it's very big. Yeah, but we realised we needed a villa so that we could, like, like right now he's napping and we can come out and, like, 
enjoy the pool. Yeah. Um, because if we had a hotel room, yeah, where would, would we be right what now? What would we do? I mean, this is the very first world problems, but... <laughs> yes. <laughs> but if he was having a nap, we'd just be on the balcony, like, we are trapped. Oh dear. And I'd be like, it's so sunny, look at the pool down there, I want to get in the pool. <sighs> but now we have our own pools. And you can do a good three strokes before you get to I the know, end. I it's know, it's not really great for exercising. <laughs> She's doing yoga though. I've been doing my daily yoga. I downloaded an app, it's really good. I think it's actually called Daily Yoga. (laughs) And I get coins. Oh God, they've gamified yoga. They've somehow gamified it, yeah. Yeah. And for those of you wondering how my uh, agoraphobia is going with the traveling and and being in a different country, um, well, I think for the actual traveling aspect, I just focused all of my attention and energy on Rupert. Uh, which was quite handy, but I definitely wouldn't have been able to cope with actually being alone. So on the plane, I very much was like, I will take Rupert to all naffy changes. You went to the toilet on your own on the plane? Did I? Yeah. You were desperate. <laughs> and Rupert was asleep, so you couldn't take him as your prop. <laughs> Wow, I think but I've no, I mean, I wasn't. Com- I wasn't complaining. Like she was like, "I'll take him for a nappy change." I was like, "Good," because I don't really. I was not looking forward to changing his nappy on an airplane toilet. Wow. No, I completely blanked that out. Yeah, I um, I got so nervous uh, the first yeah. day that I had to eat around people that I cut through my finger. Oh yeah, <laughs> like twice <laughs> with a, like twice. a normal with a normal sort of like. It was a very serrated knife. butter knife. Butter knife. <laughs> like, not even a butter knife. It was like a dinner knife, like a, like a normal knife you eat with. It was serrated. It was though. serrated. It was very serrated, and, and I seriously went like forwards and back. So it's got crumbs in there as yeah, well. Yeah, there was a bit of a delay. But we have discovered that Rupert loves bread rolls. Oh yeah. Which is great because everywhere, every restaurant you go to, like have some bread rolls, don't they? So we can just be like, can we have some bread? And they're like, yep. Yeah. And then he'll just like give it to him, and that entertains him for like a good half hour. Not that there's anything he doesn't eat, though. So. Yeah, what has he eaten? Dairy. Not? Well, he yeah, but that's dairy. not by choice. That's not by choice. He would if we could. Oh, he reaches for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the aim of our holiday is just to have a nice little relax, help you get over your seasonal, what's it called? Seasonal associated depression. Yes. Which I don't think I have like full on, but some days I do. And you know, I have to say it's really improved after having Rupert. Well, I did take a lot of vitamin D as well, that definitely helps. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. That's true. And I'm not working. I think that probably helps. I'm not going into work every day. Because, like, when you go into work, you know, you get up when it's dark, you go to work, you're inside all day, you leave work, it's dark. But, like, now I've got a baby, I can go to like baby you classes in the daytime. And, like, go for, for a, a walk. daily I walk do. with him. Actually, that's probably true. Like, go for a walk with and dogs every day. Soak in the light. Yes. It's very grey light. If it's like, yeah. In England, and it's raining. Exactly. But it's still light. Yeah, you couldn't really cope if we lived in a darker country than England. I mean, England is very much the edge for you. Yeah, any, any more. <laughs> we live on the south coast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like the sunniest spot. That's oh why God. it's called Brighton, because it's bright. Is it? I mean, yes. yeah, it makes sense. Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe we'll retire to a warmer, sunnier country. Yeah. I mean, we can't retire to the EU now, but... I do like England, though. I, I mean, I wouldn't be able to, like, you know, have so much weather chat if I lived anywhere else. Oh God. Enjoy, what would you complain about? I do about? enjoy looking up the weather. Even here, I've been looking up the weather every day. And comparing it, you know, I don't always rely on one source. I have to look at three weather sources. Usually it's like the Met Office, BBC Weather, and some local weather like, <laughs> oh, and sometimes just my phone's weather. And they're all different. It's a bit like when you look up horoscopes, you could just like pick your like favorite. <laughs> and then one day, we went out and it said 4% chance of rain. So I was like, it's not gonna rain then, is it? And it rained, but it wasn't like a drizzle. It was like proper rain. And I was so furious because I'm like, this is not 4% chance of rain. This is like proper hardcore rain. Just cause like, yeah, but it's still the 4%. I'm like, no, that's not how it works. It's like, if it was 4% rain, it should just be like a drizzle for like one minute and then it's done, surely. This is the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this video is not about weather. They're gonna go swimming. Okay, okay, let's go. Yeah, let's go before the baby wakes up. Oh God, I'm stuck. One of my favorite things about my new hearing aids is how easy they are to keep charged. The case just does it for you. You simply pop your hearing aids in whilst you're asleep. It obviously depends on how heavy your usage is, but I found that just being with a family, one charge of the case can last for five days. I used to worry about finding hearing aid batteries whilst traveling abroad, but now the nifty case is the thing charging my hearing aids, I don't need to stress. It charges by USB, and if there isn't a wall-mounted USB plug, then I can just get an adapter plug for any country. 
And this is the gorgeous downstairs bedroom, which goes out to the pool. Ooh, you can see more out there later. And this uh, is also handily where I have been keeping my clothes <laughs> because I have a lot of them. I think it's only appropriate though, you know, you're going away, you need a, you need a whole, a whole fancy summer wardrobe because I was a bit confused about the weather. I'll be honest, we were coming from England. It was very cold. <laughs> Strangely though, um, it's it's kind of worked out for me. Currently wearing a, a woolen skirt and a sort of flouncy linen top and I'm about to have to change into a bikini. This is very unexpected for me in January, but no tights. This room also serves as Claudia's I've had enough bedroom when it gets to a certain point in the night where she just can't cope with our baby's snores. Mm. Now, this is a real plus of having a deaf parent because <laughs> now back at home, Rupert's been moved into his own room, which he is delighted at. We are delighted at. Uh, you can click this card right up here if you would like to. I'm vaguely aware that there's a plane. Hang on. Thanks to my new hearing aids for making me aware that there was a plane. Anyway, so Rupert's been moved back at home into his own room, which is brilliant, and it really helps Claudia sleep through because she doesn't have to listen to his snoring. But we thought since we're on holiday and in such an unfamiliar environment and he sleeps on a floor bed, that it would be a really good idea if he slept in the room with us, cut to the room that we're sleeping in. So here we have the bed that we are sleeping in and the bed that it is sleeping in. We've taken the mattress out of the cot that they provided and then on top of it is one of our blankets from home so that it smells like home and like him so he feels comfortable. And then here, this is some padding that was underneath the cot that they gave. So it's quite padded. So if he does roll out, which he doesn't, because he's been on a floor bed since quite a young age, so he does know, he knows where the edges are, and he doesn't actually, doesn't actually roll off unless he's intentionally trying to. And then he's got Callie, his ox, Bibi, who is his <laughs> lovely little peacock with the muslin attached, and his cushion. The cushion had to come too, because currently it's his favourite lovey. Of course, he has to love a cushion. And we're back in the downstairs bedroom. I know the bed's been made. It's confusing. Don't worry about it. So my point was there that we're sleeping in the room with him here because it makes him feel more comfortable to be able to hear our breathing. And he just generally is like, oh, okay, this is all a completely different new space, but my parents are here. Great, that's cool. I feel comfortable. I can go to sleep and just snort my little heart's content. Um, and you know, hear our snoring. Uh, but we, we've we actually become quite used to him not being in the room with us. So, uh, so Claudia doesn't, doesn't like the baby snores anymore. And one thing they don't tell you uh, about having a baby is that they don't actually sleep like a baby. They sleep like a farm animal. It's a lot of that. Uh, so sometimes she just can't take it and has to go <laughs> to a different room. But um, I, as the deaf parent, can sleep through anything. Any baby snoring. Sounds really cruel when you say that. But it's not. It's loving. Oh my God, I love him so much. One of the things that I love the most about my new hearing aids is just being able to engage in little things with him that I, I'm not really able to do when I don't have them in or wouldn't have been able to enjoy really with him before. Discovering sounds. It feels like we're doing that together. We'll discover new sounds by just playing around with things. So smacking things together and I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot that that sounded hollow and I forgot that that crinkle sound would be different to this other crinkle sound, like a crisp packet sound. And then he has like crinkle books, which is a different crinkle noise to a crisp packet. Um, and then Tupperware, that makes a really fun noise. There's a wicker basket here that we've just turned over and been tapping it like a drum. Oh, hello. Bye. <laughs> yep, there's the rain. Oh dear. No sunbathing for us. Finishing, you know, probably my half eaten tomato. <laughs> oh, lovely. We got given a bottle of wine. 
I think you'll find it was my birthday. It does give this kind of like sexy small thing, look. Jessica's very desperate to tell you all about our trip to Makabama, which I have just learned how to say. Makabama's amazing, okay? So every time we go to Spain, or every time Clara goes back to Spain, goes, but oh, she lives in Spain now. That's so sad. It's not sad for her, she loves it. <laughs> Obviously, Clara loves her home country. I remind you that there's a baby sleeping in the room behind us. Don't get too excited about you Macadonna. so loud. <laughs> and it's Macadonna, not Macedonia. Because <laughs> that's the country. But in my defence, I was Google mapping Macadonna supermarket. And the first suggestion it came out was Macedonia. And I was like, thank you. Yes, actually. And then Jessica pointed out it's because I was spelling it wrong. Okay. No, like I've got a speech impediment. Like, you can't make fun of it. I don't make fun of you being deaf. You make fun of me being deaf all the time. Our large part of our relationship banter is ribbing each other's various speech and hearing impediments. So, yeah, we're a great combination, really. I don't know how we ended up together. I can't talk. You can't live it here. Mm-hmm. So Macadonna, so all these kind of like amazing sugar-free stuff, like this flan, which I really love. I put a candle in it for her birthday. She did. It was not a lit candle because I didn't have any matches. Or, you know, I thought a hotel would provide them like they normally do, you know, with a little hotel name on it. I rented a car because I thought it would help Jesse, like, you know, be more mobile getting around. It was a bit limited. Also, we've got Rupert and uh, we've got our own car seat. It's just safer. And he really sleeps in the car. Yeah, and he sleeps in the car. I've used it to go to Macadonna and down the road. So it's a really, really expensive mobility age. I've just like rented out. <laughs> we are going to hopefully use it more tomorrow. Like some kind of... The aquarium? It's like, it's like the world's most biggest collection of exotic birds. <laughs> the world's most biggest. I don't know. I don't know if that's like a really great USP, but like... It's like, wow! So for days and days after trying to work out what an earth wrinkled potatoes are, Every time we see them on the menu, we finally decided to just order them and we saw them on the room service menu. This is a wrinkled potato. Um, I've had such intense nausea for days from the stupid migraine. And all I've wanted was grapes. We even went to a supermarket. I didn't have grapes. And I just want them. So I got called to bring room service because surely five star hotel. And the man, what did he say? He's like, I said, can we have a bowl of grapes? And he said, we can have a bowl of fruit salad, but if you like, we'll make all of the fruit grapes. I was like, so we'll be a bowl of grapes. He was like, yes, perfect. <laughs> but look, they even tried to make it beautiful for me. That's tragic. But when you've got a migraine, you just have to do what you have to do. Clouds. It's sunny where we left off. <laughs> <It's like that. laughs> we missed the turning for the zoo, but it is torrentially raining, so perhaps this is good because of the time it takes us to get to the next roundabout. <laughs> Maybe it will stop raining. Sad. That's so sad. <laughs> We're trying to prolong <laughs> the time <laughs> as well. Like, Maybe it will stop raining when we get out. Oh my god, there's a lady wearing like five layers of a coat. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. We're clearly tourists in our shorts. I am wearing trousers. I mean, they're capri pants, but they are trousers. You can see I have legs. I've been told that this is a more practical outfit for parenthood, so I thought I'd try it out. <laughs> we're heading back towards the blue skies now. <laughs> Let's see, if it's 11 degrees up at that roundabout. It might get progressively warmer, hopefully, as we get further down. Claudia's holiday chat. You know what no one talks about? Weather and hearing aids. Because well, here is your moment. not only is wind an issue, but also the actual getting wet. Did you really have to think about that? Because <laughs> you can't wear hearing aids in a bath, obviously, but you also can't wear them in torrential rain. That's why you should wear a hat. I couldn't wear hats with my old hearing aids, but I can wear hats with these ones. Whoa. Can I just say? I know, I know that things feel really close to me because now I'm sat on the side that I'm not blind in, but she did genuinely just drive it into a bush. That bush was overhanging the road quite substantially. 
I feel like I should be one of those horses, maybe, that have blinders on at events. <laughs> you do on this side. Just so I don't get freaked Your out. blind side. Okay. I do feel a bit better. God, that's also coming for me. <laughs> oh, no, there's a sign. Yeah. Jungle Park. 100 meters. Woo! Look, it's sunnier. It's coming. We took one look at that and decided no. There are lots of people standing outside. And they like ponchos. <laughs> like looking very <laughs> upset and a bit cold. It is only ten and a half degrees now, apparently. Okay, so we're going to go back down the mountain Into to the where sun. it's sunny, if you can see that. It's sunny and lovely back down there see? on the coast. <laughs> <laughs> That's where our hotel is and uh, where we're headed back. <laughs> Sorry, you feel sad that the animals didn't get to meet you. Yeah, they didn't get to see how amazing you like. Your baby is. Well, like babies are, yeah. Right. Like, oh, look at that cute baby. You don't feel bad that Rupert didn't get to see the animals, just that the animals didn't get to see Rupert. <laughs> I We're on the beach and it's still raining. But not as bad. And it's slightly warmer. But Rupert's got the sun wherever he goes. <laughs> the sun has come out, the rain has stopped. Magical. Stunning. which normally is just around the park with the dogs. Yeah. But I would say this has got quite an impressive landscape, a bit more of a different It's quite different view to what we're uh, used to. You Not as the green, but still kind of cacti, palm cacti. trees. Cacti. Cacti. Palm trees. Palm trees. Can we've, say got, that we've got this beautiful sea. Things. And the sun is shining. Oh, you are so gorgeous in sunshine. Oh, thanks. Yeah, um, I know. I'm really awful in like the wet, wet and cold, which is basically shut up. England You're every gorgeous day. Gorgeous in every weather. Like, she's saying she only loves me on holiday. I love you in it. all weathers, Claudia. I am less moody on holiday you know generally. Today's edition of What Does Jessica Eat to help her extreme nausea. We went for avocado with prawn. Claudia assures me it's more than just an avocado with two prawns. And a fruit salad, which the lady says doesn't have sugar on. And this is mine. A massive lump of tuna steak and a big bowl of fries. trying to get my camera. And Master Rupert, we have four adorable vintage rompers, a selection of collared onesies, because how do you make a onesie cute? You add a collar to it, preferably with dogs. <laughs> a number of pajamas, but like an acceptable number, yeah. not a stupid number. And shoes. The light, I don't know actually. What do we think? The summery tartan. Mm. <laughs> Grabbed before it's even come on. Eating al fresco. Oh, that's a lovely view. It's our last night, and we've come out to try and get some dinner. Early dinner. Attempt so, to make Rupert sleep, but that didn't happen. No, I think he's more interested in eating. Which is fair enough. Always. <laughs> he is his mother's son. 
This place looks nice, but I don't think it's there. This, uh, no. Let's go along. Ooh. Amazing. It's a little hand trying to get in on the oyster action there. And now back to England. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it just as much as we enjoyed our first little holiday away together as a family. And make sure to click the link in the description to find out more about my amazing GN Hearing Resound One hearing aids. Thank you so much to GN for sponsoring this video. And I'm really, really in love with my hearing aids. I cannot stress enough to you guys how wonderful they are. Looking forward to seeing you in my next video. Mwah.